Hey everybody, my name is Joe Piverunas. I'm the founder and managing editor of Nanalyze. We're a boutique media and research firm that covers disruptive tech investing for a broad audience of retail and institutional investors across the globe. Today we're gonna to talk about eight LIDAR stocks and it's quite surprising we actually have eight to talk about because as of several years ago, we had none. The reason that we have so many companies that are publicly traded today involved in LIDAR, which is a relatively new emerging technology, is because of the SPAC vehicle that let them IPO quite easily. Before we start talking about SPACs though, we wanna to touch on what LIDAR is. I was getting ready to do this presentation, realized I had forgotten entirely what the acronym stood for. Well, it stands for Light Detection and Ranging, and it's all about creating devices that send out millions of lasers that when they hit objects around you, the light reflects back to the source and then the device calculates the time it took for the light to return and it can create a 3D map of the world around it, as you can see in this picture. Now, about 10 years ago, you could buy a device that would do this for about $75,000. And now you can get a hockey puck size device today for $100 that does the same thing. There's lots of applications for this, including robotics, industrial equipment, of course, autonomous driving, though Elon Musk once said that he thought LIDAR in autonomous driving was a fool's errand. But the idea is that even if this doesn't take off in automobiles, that there are a lot of other applications this can potentially be used for. Now, when we look at the eight LIDAR stocks that are trading today, one is significantly larger than the rest, that's Luminar. They're about five times the size of their nearest competitor, and they have a market cap that equals the combined market caps of all the other companies you see on this chart. Now that's not because they valued their company significantly higher than the rest. It's partially explained by the fact that Luminar has had a decent stock price performance since their IPO, while the rest of their competitors have largely plummeted. Now, short-term share price movements need to be taken with a grain of salt, but there are some takeaways here. And what we've done recently is looked at data from PitchBook. They provided us with valuation rounds that took place before SPACs, and we have data for four of these companies. You can see the table at the bottom here. It shows that for Eva Technologies, they had a Series B in 2019, the market cap is currently 927 million and that series B valuation was 400. So they're trading at 132% premium. And then you can go down the list to Velodyne, which is trading significantly below the series B valuation that took place more than three years ago at a $1.78 billion valuation. And that company now today has a market cap of less than 500 million. We're gonna talk about why that is. And then there's Septon, which had a Series C in February 2020 of 650 million valuation compared to their market cap of 700 million today. So this just gives us some benchmark because you may have a firm that sinks drastically after the SPAC debut, and that's only because it was overpriced to begin with. So pre-SPAC IPO or pre-SPAC valuations help us understand what the company was valued at by sophisticated investors prior to their SPAC. And I'll include the article in which we looked at this stuff recently in the description of this video. Now, another thing that we like to look at for SPACs is when they had their glossy investor deck that made all these great predictions, how good of a job did the management team do executing on their promises? And you can see here that Luminar has done quite well Septon has, Ouster is about where they said they'd be, and the rest of these companies haven't really been able to deliver on their promises, especially Velodyne, which was expecting to land $152 million in 2021 revenues and came in at around 62 million. Now, when we look at the valuation of companies, another method we'll use is called the simple valuation ratio. We take the market cap of a company, we divide it by annualized revenues, that's last quarter times four, and the resulting number is our simple valuation ratio. Just to put this into perspective, we would never 
invest in a company with a simple valuation ratio higher than 40, no matter how great the story is. That has proven to work quite well over time. As a matter of fact, you could probably even reduce that number lately because the entire tech market is sliding downwards. Now, for this company to have a simple valuation ratio of 100, that's just way too high, and we would say that they are quite overvalued. Here's a look at the simple valuation ratios for all eight stocks. You can see that going down the list, the only two that wouldn't be considered overvalued are, are Ouster and Velodyne. Now, we'll go through this list of names very quickly and take a look at each company. Luminar, as we said, overvalued. They're burning through a ton of cash, though they appear to be reining that in in 2021. For this company to have a simple valuation ratio of 40, when we would consider it something we might look at to invest, just based on valuation, it would need to trade at $8.70 a share, or they would need to have quarterly revenues of $31 million or more. Well, you can see that the fourth quarter of 2021, they're around $12 million in revenues, but that's some nice growth over time. You're expecting over 40 million in revs this year. That would be actually exceeding the target they set in their SPAC deck. They exceeded that target this year, so that's great to see. Company is, though, uh, quite overvalued. We look at some more overvalued names on this list. Eva, they're close to reaching meaningful revenues, which we um, put at around $10 million per annum. They just released their full, first fully commercial LiDAR piece and they're on the NVIDIA Drive Autonomous Vehicle Platform. Interesting side note that I was looking at the companies in the Silicon Valley that had the most employees working on autonomous driving, and NVIDIA was at the top with 2,500 employees. That's quite interesting. Next, we have Septon, latest spec to go public. They supposedly have this deal with GM that they're gonna supply LiDAR for up to nine models beginning next year, so we'll look forward to that. It's the most overpriced SPAC on our list by simple valuation ratio, but if you look at the pre-SPAC valuation numbers, it's in line. So uh, take that for what, it, what it's worth. Then we have AI, negligible revenues, just over a million dollars for the first three quarters of 2021. I think they had promised something like $13 million. Uh, they have commercialization expected in 2024, so you can wait a while to see um, any sort of meaningful revenues come in. Then we have InnoViz. They're supposed to introduce a $100 solid state lighter in 2018. And they had all of $5.5 million in revenues for 2021. That was 39% below their SPAC estimate. So at least a couple companies have really disappointed investors, but perhaps the most disappointing name on the list is Velodyne. This was one of the first companies to go public using a SPAC. There was a lot of promise around this business. And as you can see on the left-hand side here, the revenues have been sliding over the years and they were supposed to be doing some sort of uh, strategic calibration of pricing. And the SPAC deck said that it all turned around in 2021 when they were gonna expect $152 million in revenues. Well, you can see on the left-hand side, it's like there's somewhere around $60 million in revenues and they missed that by a country mile. Now, that's one problem, but the other is that you have the founder, he's created a website. Now he's no longer with the company, seems to have been pushed out. He created a website called Say Velodyne, and it's a appeal as the largest, largest current shareholder, an appeal to all the other investors out there to get rid of the chairman of the board at Velodyne. And he talks about how they've had, you know, poor stockholder returns, dismal financial performance, There's, that stuff's pretty obvious, makes some criticisms about corporate governance, excessive compensation, strategy, lack of focus on innovation, et cetera. So you can go to that website and check that out. But whenever you have a company that has a disagreement with a major investor and there's turmoil like this, it's the drama is just best avoided. There's nothing that you'd want to get involved with here until that dust settles. And until Velodyne can explain why they've missed their targets uh, so dramatically and turn the ship around. And that will be 
something that only takes place when this debacle has cleared up. Then we have a company called Ouster. They had significant revenue at 34 million for 2021. Really nice chart here in terms of their consistent revenue growth over time. They had 600 customers in 2021, up from about 500 the year before. No single customer accounting for more than 10%. They expect to double revenue in this year between 65 and 85 million. It's not wildly overvalued. Of all the stocks that we talk about in this presentation, this is the one we'll probably come back and take a closer look at. Then there's Quantergy. They're really too small to consider. Market cap of $166 million. Uh, they left their SPAC deal with $50 million in cash and then a commitment of $125 million in funding that they can draw 25 from today. That's as opposed to having $278 million in cash in their books. An article by optics.org put the revenues at 3.9 million for 2021, not a very big number. And they lost a case they brought against Velodyne against um, their patent portfolio. So there's nothing really to like about Quantergy. Companies this small, they aren't really worth your time because there's just far too much risk there. Now, the bigger question that needs to be asked here is that LIDAR is a technology. What's the potential? So there are a lot of broad applications. By the way, one of the things we really liked about Ouster was the fact that automotive only accounted for about a third of the sensors they ship. So whatever company emerges as a leader, we expect them to be addressing use cases across robotics, industrial machinery, vehicle autonomy, and the like. So how big is that potential opportunity across all these use cases? Well, you read the reports and you know they'll talk about $6 billion before the end of the decade. That's not a very big total addressable market when you have a lot of companies fighting for it. So what we wanna do now is wait for a leader to emerge and then revisit the theme. I think we'll probably take another look at Ouster because it seems like a really interesting company. But aside from that, I think the bigger question we all need to be asking is, do we want to invest in LIDAR as a thesis? Is there really a potential there? And we're probably just not sure yet based on some of the companies that have you know, forecasted they'd have a lot of revenue based on the use cases and the customer's demand, and that hasn't transpired. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Please put your comments in the comment section. We'll address them. Subscribe to our channel and we'll be putting out more videos in the future around similar disruptive tech themes. Thank you very much for your time.